Hola, hola. My name is Ramon, cosmetic chemist, esthetician, lover of a sunscreen, and today we're back finally with a sunscreen review, a mineral sunscreen review, as you can see in the title. We're finally talking about the Fenty Skin, Fenty Skin Hydrovisor Mineral Sunscreen SPF 30. It's been a second since I've A, done a review. B, talked anything Fenty on this channel. Fenty Skin, it's, they've had a few launches, but obviously they have now the two sunscreens. And three, obviously we're in a new space. This is film setup number one in my new apartment. We're still figuring things out. We're trying to figure out how to best use the space and obviously figure out lighting. Please bear with me. But yes, today we're talking about the Fenty Skin Hydrovisor Mineral Sunscreen. The tea is I bought this with my own coin at the beginning of July when I I was in LA, needed a sunscreen. I remembered I hadn't tried this yet. I don't really get Fenty Skin PR like that. And I remember this one. I'm gonna be fully transparent with you. Real talk, girlfriends here. I do sometimes get Fenty Skin PR. I get sent to my mom's house and because my mother loves Fenty as much as I do, she jacks all my product before I get my hands on it. This one, I didn't get until very recently in PR. So I bought this in June. They just sent another version in PR. But also I remember they advertised this launch and they talked about it on their Instagram and everything. They did some promo behind it and then it was like low-key radio silence afterwards. I really have not seen Fenty Skin talk about this sunscreen. I have seen a few creators try it out and especially if you want to see a deep skin application. Uh, my friend Tamino Abby, I have the link for the video down in the description box. She does showcase what this looks like on deep skin. I'll have more on that later on in the video. But yeah, I was interested because Fenty took so long to launch a mineral sunscreen. They did one and then I feel like there was no promo behind it. So today we're going to talk about it. As for all my mineral sunscreen videos, we're going to be using my four B testing rubric. We're gonna talk about beard, beading, beets, and brown skin friendly. It's been a second since I've said that. And also I'll have timestamps for everything down below from application to each of the different sections of the video. So whatever part of the video you wanna to get to, just click down below. You'll get there a lot faster. For all my application footage, I weigh out my sunscreen on a scale, but also use a measuring spoon. I lost my quarter teaspoon, so I had to use a half teaspoon on this, so bear with me on that one. So what you see on the application footage is the amount of sunscreen I need for my face size. If you wanna know how much sunscreen you should be wearing for your face size, I'll have a video linked under the card above. Anything else? It's been a second since I've done one of these. Oh, and then I also show half face application so you can see if there is a white cast, how substantial that is. So let's get into it. So talking application, and I do have it on right now all over my face. With the Fenty Skin, this is a fully mineral sunscreen. There's no chemical filters necessarily. We'll get into that later. It uses 50 15.5% zinc oxide, no titanium dioxide for that broad spectrum SPF 30 protection. So for the pumps, it's actually, I weighed it out. Three pumps is just shy of how much I actually need for my face. So I just do the extra fourth pump and I just, you know, make sure I really get good protection. For the half face application, two pumps, you can see I put that on. This does not have a standard white mineral sunscreen look. This has, it's very Fenty skin a pink tint to it. There's no iron oxides that tint this. It's actually just yellow six and red 33. So this uses uh, colorants to get that pink color. You can see I massage it on. It doesn't, still doesn't turn white on me. I'm for reference between a Fenty 265 to a Fenty 320, depending on the season. So I'm very mid tier, but this goes on pink and then it kind of melts in. There is the slightest, slightest, slightest tint of a little bit of a tone up initially, but I find it melts down. And I mean, you can tell me right now, I have it all over my face. like. Can you tell I got a little cast situation or anything going on? I, I can't personally. My husband can't either. I work it to have my face, let it sit down for five minutes, and you can see the side with the sunscreen versus the side without. She looks good. She looks very good. And then I take it and apply it for the full face. Overall, in terms of the user experience of this, talking about the finish, it's glowy. It's moisturizing. The Fenty skin, it's interesting how they advertise it because they're like, moisturizer plus sunscreen. Every sunscreen is technically a moisturizer with UV filters incorporated into it. This one specifically, they do say it's gonna give you a moisturized finish, and this definitely does. I applied this right now on bare skin. No toner, no fat water underneath. It's very glowy. It's very moisturizing. So if you have oily skin, do note, this is your moisturizer and sunscreen in one. If you have dry skin, definitely prep appropriately, but also you will have a glowy finish. Also worth noting, this is the section on fragrance. This does have the very signature Fenty, like Kalahari melon citrusy scent to it, but definitely a lot more subdued than the original Hydrovisor. But they also launched a fragrance-free version of this. So if you are sensitive to fragrance, which is a really great option considering this is a mineral sunscreen, therefore it's a much better option for sensitive skin types. There is a fragrance free option that's going to be suitable for you hopefully. Looking at the marketing for this, this is straight from the Fenty Skin website. So Hydrovisor gets physical. Finally a sheer mineral SPF moisturizer that loves on makeup. Straight up, the lightweight sunscreen works over time to even skin tone, refine pores, and instantly give you some extra bounce while also boosting skin's moisture barrier. Plus, it's refillable, which is like it's Fenty Skin's whole thing. The low down on the sunscreen, it's a lightweight daily hydration that strengthens the skin's moisture barrier. Mineral SPF 30 sun protection that's sheer on all skin tones, no chalkiness or flashback here. Absorbs instantly and doesn't leave your skin looking or feeling greasy, creating the perfect canvas for makeup. Brightens skin and reduces the look of pores, dark spots, fine lines, and wrinkles. Hydrates for plumper, bounce here more 
non-elastic skin, refreshes with a lush tropical fruit and floral scent. A lot of claims there, but let's get into the product and some of the ingredient breakdowns as well. I don't usually do these for these mineral sunscreen videos, but chemists and everything. So 15.5% zinc oxide. People are gonna be like, oh, it's not a 100% mineral sunscreen because there is beta lactose salicylate. So that just helps to give you that boost in UV. And as a chemist, especially one who I have extensive training experience in UV formulation, especially in the US, you really have to teeter. Zinc oxide is a better option for skin of color. For melanated skin, titanium has a much more whiteness to it. Zinc oxide is gonna be a lot more of a suitable white pigment for deep skin, especially for like foundation formulations, for example. It's gonna bring down the shade without giving an ashy effect. But you also wanna have a good SPF value that's you're gonna achieve from the sunscreen. And zinc oxide is also gonna give you that broad spectrum designation, whereas titanium dioxide is gonna fall short. Beta lactose salicylate is gonna boost that UV protection. By technicality, beta lactose salicylate is not a chemical filter. It does function very similarly to how organic or chemical UV filters do function, just because it is in the same category of ingredients as octosalates and actually salicylic acid, for example, which has its own set of UV properties, but that's a different video. Interestingly enough, that aside, in my mind, I mean, I know Lab Muffin did a whole video on that I have my own opinion on it. It's not a chemical filter by recognition, therefore this is a mineral sunscreen still. But looking through the ingredients list, there is something called safflower oleosomes, and I recognize that because in formulation, obviously again, you want to be able to achieve a really high SPF value while still being able to maybe maintain a lower percentage of UV filters or whatnot. Those safflower oleosomes are, there is evidence from manufacturer information from a, a supplier that does state that they're able to boost the SPF values of sunscreens while still using a lower percentage of organic filters so that's chemical filters so it's interesting to see that in a mineral sunscreen because in my mind i'm like it's either reinforcing the film forming ability of the sunscreen meaning better spf protection or it's just ensuring more even distribution of the inorganic filters mineral filters in the sunscreen so chemistry thing aside from that as with all fancy skin products there's a lot of uh fruit extracts you have the kalahari melon you have niacinamide in this as well a nice antioxidant benefit aloe vitamin e gluconolactone in here which it's a low percentage so i'm not not seeing like Gluconolactone, if you don't know, that's a PHA. It's one of the two PHA ingredients. I'm not seeing PHA exfoliation. I'm also not necessarily seeing pH adjustments. I think gluconolactone in this is a component of a really popular preservative complex. So that's what I'm seeing that as right now. And yeah, looking at this, I mean, you have nice humectants. You have glycerin, propane dial, but you also have like shea butter. You have the safflower oleosomes. You have some emollients in that. And I think that contributes to the fact that this is an emollient moisturizing sunscreen. Even on my hands, I'm like, okay, I feel that residual emollients of this. This is not for those people who want to be matte. Anyways. Getting on with the rest of the video to the four Bs. Again, beard, beating, beats, brown skin friendly. Beard, how the mineral sunscreen plays with beard, facial hair, hairline, all that. Be the judge on screen for me, but realistically, I think this worked in very, very well. And no issue with my eyebrows. Hairline, I mean, I got a fresh haircut, so it's always worse when like the fade is fresh and it like catches on the stubble, but I think it looks good. And in terms of beard and mustache, I think it worked in really well. Where I always get clocked, and my husband's always the one that clocks me, is here in the corner and edges of my beard, but I think it worked in okay. What I will say is that the texture is very elegant still it is emollient verges on greasy depending on what your preference is but it's never gritty and it's never hard to spread so i think it's really easy to work into the skin and therefore if you get it in like facial hair for example easy to work out and it's not going to be like a user issue so that's definitely a positive i think the texture for this is a very unique texture and user experience for a mineral sunscreen beading how it plays with other skin care is there weird textural issues does it pill no this has this quality that fenty skin sunscreens have where they melt into the skin your skin looks like butter and it's it's like it diffuses some of the appearance of pores and your skin just looks a little bit more refined. It's a really, really beautiful visual. I mean, I've layered this obviously over the Fat Water, which is like one of my favorite Fenty Skin products. I've also layered this over other skincare products. Never an issue with layering, never an issue with how it plays with other skincare. But do note, if you got oily skin, I don't recommend a moisturizer underneath this. Beats, how it plays with makeup. Again, a very elegant mineral sunscreen texture. For 15.5% zinc, I was very shocked. And this layers beautifully under makeup. It leaves you nicely moisturized. Again, oily skin, be Wear, but I mean, we all know I'm like Fenty Beauty biased. This layers beautifully under Fenty Beauty products, layers beautifully under other makeup products. An issue of mine is always eyelids. I have very oily eyelids. Anything with a pigment always collects in my eyelids. So tinted mineral sunscreens, tinted sunscreens, mineral sunscreens, period. Because this has that pink tint, I don't get like the white creases in my eyelids. This does collect a little bit. Therefore, I'm never gonna knock a sunscreen for doing so. But worth noting, and it just sits and melts into the skin so beautifully that I don't have an issue of the makeup sitting on top of a 
layer of sunscreen that's sitting on top of my skin. Like it all melds beautifully, never an issue. While we're talking about B, I would never reapply mineral sunscreen over makeup. I don't recommend. I mean, if you want to see that, let me know. I'll try it. And then brown skin friendly. So based off my experience and objective perspective on this whole situation, this works great, I think, up into a Fenty 350 like range. As I mentioned earlier, I'll have a link below for a uh, Tamino's video if you want to go watch on a deeper skin application. I believe she's like low to mid Fenty 400s. This does leave a cast on her. At the end of the day, this is a mineral sunscreen, as elegant as it is, in my opinion. This is a mineral sunscreen. Mineral filters, aka inorganic filters, they're white insoluble powders that need to be suspended in a formulation. They don't dissolve, so they just stay white insoluble powders. Tints help a lot to diminish the appearance of them, but they're still going to have that whiteness to them. So on deeper skin tones, it's still going to show up. And that's the caveat with that. And so on her and on other deep skin creators, if you wear the adequate amount, not like a little dot, dot, dot here and blend it in. No, like if you wear the adequate amount, you're going to have a white cast issue. That was, I think, a big thing of Fenty skin. I'm like, is that why they didn't promote it so much? Because they were like, oh, we made this as sheer as possible. We definitely try to make as elegant of a mineral sunscreen as possible. And that just didn't hit the mark. I don't know. What I will say is I really thought that if anyone were to do a really good range of tinted mineral sunscreens, Fenty was going to be the one to do it. And I do not know if they have that in the works. I really hope they do but they didn't do that they did this instead and therefore i'm like there's a lot of question marks there so it's not the most brown skin friendly it's an elegant mineral sunscreen i will give them flowers where that's due it's a really good user experience one more thing to add i don't know why i yelled that sorry one more thing to add so here's some tea though um beyond just what i did for the review so looking at the fenty skin marketing that i mentioned earlier it's interesting that again they made a lot of claims especially around the chalkiness flashback and all that and there's a realism as to what to expect and what what you want to promote. One thing I will say is having worked in the cosmetic space, the division between marketing and the lab, it's a very big division. So people who actually promote the product might not get all the tea all the time correct. And I always think that's an issue that we need to improve. But looking at the Fenty Skin Marketing on the website, they have a section talking about what do you mean by chemical versus mineral sunscreen? And they do state, you know, chemicals um, absorb UV rays, chemical sunscreens, whereas mineral sunscreens form a physical block, which we know is not accurate. They had an opportunity to, you know, really spill the tea on that. And they do say we consulted with experts, which I'm just like, are the experts in the room with us right now. And they do a lot, I think, on the other end of that though, to be like, chemical sunscreens are still safe, they're still good for you. I think they could have done this a lot better. And I'm only saying this now because for the Naturium UV Reflect, y'all got on me for not, you know, speaking my truth and everything because it was Naturium and Susan Yara's brand, which is not the tea, but you know, I love Fenty, so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna see this and recognize this for what it is. But yeah, that's one thing on this, which is like the marketing, the launch behind this, left a lot of question marks and I'm like a little bit like, mm, wah, wah. but I'm optimistic, I am hopeful that the team behind Fenty, they're doing something else behind the scenes as well. Because again, giving this with flowers, it's a very elegant mineral sunscreen option in terms of texture and user experience. There's stuff you can't necessarily get beyond when it's a mineral sunscreen, obviously, white pigment. But overall, definitely I'd say like a C plus effort. Excited to see if they do a tinted option, fingers crossed. What I will say is, well, this does leave a white cast on deep skin. It primes beautifully for makeup. So if you really do need a mineral option for sensitive skin, but you have deep skin and you wear makeup, this is still something that is worth considering, maybe. Oh, one thing I didn't say either is this is $39. $39 for 1.7 fluid ounces or 50 mil. But I remember back in the day when Fenty first launched, July 31st, 2020, my birthday, they, these were only $32. So, I mean, obviously cost of living, inflation, everything has gone up. But I saw a $39 price point and I was gagged a little bit. And again, I spent my own coin on this, so. Interesting, but with that being said, that was my review of the Fenty Skin Hydrovisor Mineral Moisturizer Sunscreen. I did like this for me. I give this a solid C plus. I think there was a lot of things I was very like mm, about and I don't necessarily have the answers for that. And I hope they're working on a lot more sunscreen options on like the behind the scenes. Fingers crossed. I actually do not know the tea on that. But you let me know down below in the comment section. Have you used this? What are your thoughts on it? Is your experience the same as mine? Also let me know what other sunscreens are you loving? What should I review? I really have been so, so, so busy this year. Please forgive me and I feel like I just have not seen so many sunscreen launches especially mineral sunscreen so if you're using a new mineral sunscreen that you're loving or that you think I should try leave those down below in the comments section please and thank you do not forget to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so that you know when I post more skincare sunscreen and Fenty related content on my channel give the video a thumbs up and thanks for watching guys bye